Welcome back to Stormworks about this weapons DLC. I really love making bullets go into the guns. It's quite difficult to make a turret that properly reloads and you know you can actually use it in combat. There are a lot of turrets on the workshop and in vehicles on the workshop, but very very few of them are useful in a combat situation, whether against another player or against an AI. They just don't have any method of restocking them or aiming them that makes any kind of, any kind of sense. Well, I've been releasing a ton of these bad boys, and they are not very difficult to make once you understand how to make them. And I think that might be the issue. I think people might just might not know exactly how to make good turrets yet. And maybe there's this giant bank of hidden turrets that I'm not aware of that work great, and I just haven't seen them. But I can tell you that all the popular vehicles and all the popular turrets that I've seen are bad. And I'm saying that from the perspective of combat. They're not bad from the perspective of visuals. They're built specifically as model turrets. They're made, meant to look like a realistic turret from a specific ship somewhere. They do very good at that. But they're not going to be very good in combat. So I'm going to teach you how to make a turret that's actually useful in combat. And I've tested these turrets out pretty extensively. So the method I'm going to teach you is proven. You can try and make these turrets look good uh, at your own, uh, you know, whenever you want to. But for me, functionality is, is the key. So to make a turret, we're going to start with the spinny bits. There are nine or ten different spinny bits we have to choose from. These are the primary six. Only a few of these are going to be very useful to us. Uh, the two that are the most valuable are the compact robotic pivot, which is what we'll be using today, and the velocity pivot, which is what you use if you need your turret to be able to spin around 360 or more. We're only going to be doing 180 turret, just so that we can show you the example of how to do it without having to go into microchip controls and stuff. So we're going to be using this compact robotic pivot. There's also these. These turret rings are basically useless unless you're making a turret so large that you want the player to be able to climb up into it from underneath, which, I mean, it happens, but we're not doing that today. So we're just going to be going with the small robotic pivot. Very basic stuff. The base of the uh, of the turret is the spinny bit that goes uh, around and around, um, the yaw pivot. So uh, we have to decide which direction is correct. You can see how these arrows are pointed, and it says that the uh, minus is going clockwise and the plus is going counterclockwise. That's backwards because we want it to go the other way. Oh, that didn't work. Sorry. Try that again. There we are. So now you can see that when we press D, this is going to spin right, and that's what we want. We're then going to go ahead and add in some space, and then something like this, and then we'll put in another set of these. These are going to be our pitch, and once again, we want this to be the other way around, so that when we press W, it's going to move the guns up rather than down. So you just have to make sure that these arrows are pointed the right way, or you're going to have to do a lot of cutting and pasting later to fix them, and that's a big pain in the butt. Now we're just going to give ourselves some space, add in a battery and a seat. We can hook the battery up to give us some juice. I'm going to add in just a little bit of extra space here just so that we can see things moving. There we are. And then we're going to wire up the actual controls, which we're going to go ahead and just use direct seat controls for now. Later on, we'll probably want to use um, like microchips and stuff, but we'll deal with that when it comes. And now our turret is more or less complete as it comes to moving it around, see? Now it is resetting back to neutral whenever I let go of the keys, and that's because of the control scheme we're using. Uh, if you don't want that to happen, and you probably don't, you probably just want to go in here and set these to sticky. There we go. Now the only problem is, what sort of guns are we going to use? Well, we're going to start with battle cannons, because battle cannons are a good balance between big and small. So let's pull them out. Battle cannons. There's the battle cannon set right here. This is what a battle cannon looks like. For now, let's just strap some battle cannons to the top, just to see the sort of, uh, of visual we get, right? 
So one of the key elements to this is you want to make sure you're not accidentally bumping into anything when you move on your intended motions. For example, right now our battle cannons are in front of our, uh, our pivot. So when we raise up, nothing gets anywhere near the ground, which means that we could have a base that's, you know, very, very close to these guns. But if we were to move down, you can see that we move down into the ground really, really fast. So if we wanted to have guns that could look down, we would probably want to move them back a little bit. You know, just work with the, these pivots and figure out where you want your guns relative to these pivots based on what sort of performance you want. But here's the part I like. Bullets. Feeding bullets into these larger cannons is a lot of fun. They have these individual bullet racks. Each of these racks is a single bullet right? They don't have like a chamber full of these. You need to feed them in one by one at the right timing. But how do you get them to these guns? I mean, you're going to have some because I mean, you can just, you know, do this and now you've got some bullets. And this is what most of the turrets on the workshop do. They just have direct connected feeds like this and then you have to manually reload it. That's not the best way to do it. You see, there is a connector piece, this bad boy here. This connector piece will allow us to pull bullets from any other connected element, like this. So once they're connected, as long as the bullets are pointed the same direction, uh, once they're connected, you can feed the bullets into this chain and then feed them into the gun. And so you can pull bullets up from underneath, down here in the ship somewhere, and just like siphon them up into the turret and into the gun when you need them. In order to do that, though, you have to know where you're going to be putting those pieces. So here's the trick. You put them on the pivots, or as close to the pivots as you can manage. So for example, if we were going to go from the guns into the uh, chamber here, we would want to have one of them around here, something like this, and then another one right here to connect to it. And when we're pulling up from the, the ship itself into the turret pri proper, we would want to have one that's right like that, and then one that is pointed the other way. Like that. I think that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. You want to make sure that they're always pointed the same direction, although you might make a mistake and have them all pointed the wrong direction depending on how many curly cues you've got, but uh, this setup here has a couple of major advantages when it comes to piping bullets in. So if we were to come back into our setting here and we were to move this turret around, you can see how these connectors move along with the pivot very, very tightly. So right now they're connected, and now they're not, and now they're connected, and now they're not. And there's no thing like spinning or jutting out or anything complicated like that. This is a very low, um, low footprint solution. It just works. It never gets caught on anything. It never explodes. Uh, it even works for the Big Berthas now that they've fixed the Big Bertha connectors. And we've got the same thing for the pivots at the bottom. So you can see why it's so important to perfectly line these up with your pivots. And yes, you can run these pivots through, or you can run these uh, connectors through a turret base, you know, those rings, but you don't have to. This is fine. So once we've got that in place, we can run uh, cabling, bullet cabling, up to wherever we want it to go. So we would pick, for example, these straight pieces and just hook them up like this and then curl it over. There it is. And then we would want this part to go into the gun, right? But our gun is not in the right place for that, is it? This is where you get to be a little bit creative. What we've done is we've done a turret that comes inside out. There's also turrets that come outside in, which is where we would have these connectors on the outside surface coming up on the outside. Either way works, but both of them have to be able to actually get the bullets to the gun at some point. For us, the easiest way to do that would be to simply move the battle cannon to right here. Boom, we're connected, right? But then we only have one bullet that's directly connected to the gun. So if we were to do this, for example, right now we're not loading the gun. 
but we're just feeding it, right? So if we were to start shooting at something in the sky or something, this is now disconnected. This connector is no longer connected because we've sheared it. The problem is that if we fire this bullet, there's no other bullets coming. We don't have any other bullets close up to this gun. And now one way to fix that would be to have some kind of spinning clip that constantly tries to feed ammunition into the gun. But more commonly what we do is we just create a little bit of, uh, of, a, of a local supply of, of gun. <laughs> We're also going to need to have one of these feeders for the larger guns. The smaller guns don't need these, but the larger ones do. And we might as well make that part of the coil, right? So for example, if we were just to do this, there we go. We can straighten this up and then bring it over like so. And we're keeping an eye on whether the bullet is pointed the right way. It's very, very easy to accidentally point the bullet backwards, uh, in which case it won't, won't work. <laughs> so now we can just put the gun here again. So like this, right? Uh, but it's not that easy, is it? You see all this red marking stuff? Well, every gun has a couple of different considerations as to how it can be connected. In this gun's case, we've got these blocks here, these black elements, which are in our way, so we can't just coil around the gun. And similarly, it's got this ejector section where you can't put anything right here because that's where the spent casing comes out of. So in order for us to connect up this gun, we actually have to give it quite a bit of extra space. Uh, so in order to do that, I would recommend that you place the gun and then you know work on the bullets and then move the gun and then work on the bullets until you get a real uh, distinct feeling for what might work and what might not. In this case, we could do something like this. Each gun is a little bit different in terms of how it connects up, but this would work fine. However, this only gives us one, two, three, four, five, five bullets before we need to stop and reload. So this would be a pretty short uh, salvo, you know, five shots, and then you've got to go back and uh, go, go back to neutral to pull more bullets into this, uh, this set here. So normally speaking, you're going to have to find a trade-off. Do you want to have more bulk around your guns and have more constant firing before having to restock? Or are you um, going to do something smaller and lighter and tighter? In this case, we're going to do something smaller and lighter and tighter just because it is uh, easier. So one of the other issues right now is that we do have to, in fact, load each of these up, which we'll just do a couple of bullets here for demonstration purposes. Uh, when you're actually creating the final um, set that you're going to be drawing from inside of the ship, uh, you're going to want to use cut and paste rather than doing this manually hundreds of times. I'll show you that later. So now we have these bullets, but how do we load them into the gun? This gun can't fire until it's actually got bullets loaded into it. It's not loaded right now. Well, in order to load the guns, you have to trigger this thing here and open the breech for the correct amount of time. You can work out that amount of time yourself if you'd like. I also have this auto loader, um, which is on the workshop. You can just search for breech auto loader and find it. We're just going to use that. So the way the breach autoloader works is it takes a loaded argument and then it tells you to open the breach and run the feeder. So there's the feeder and there's the breach. Now you're going to need one of these for each cannon because every cannon needs to be reloaded individually. And you can also set them for whatever they are. In this case, it's a battle cannon. Notice that if you're using small guns like auto cannons, that's not necessary. They automatically load themselves. You don't have to manually load them, but you will have to restock the uh, uh, the barrels of ammunition that you're using up, right? So uh, we do have to connect this up with an electrical source. These feeders do not run on hopes and dreams. They run on voltage. There we go. See, it loaded it up loaded true so if we wanted to fire it all we have to do is connect up the fire command we'll go ahead and connect it up to this trigger and I usually go in and change it to push rather than toggle
now we have a perf perfectly functioning uh, little set of guns. We can go a lot further with this. We can have them alternate. We can uh, we can have secondary types of guns. Uh, we can do a lot of other things. Let's go ahead and develop this a little bit further. For starters, let's make sure that we can actually restock this turret. And the way we need to restock the turret is by loading in ammunition from somewhere else. In this case, we're going to load it in from underneath the turret, which is, for me, the standard. So this here is the base plane of the turret. This is where the turret spins around, right? And we can see that very clearly by going into merge mode. And we can also merge these, by the way. This will save you a little bit of, of computation if you merge these, just because then they'll move at the same pace. But as you can see, here are the three basic pieces. We've got the spinny bit, we've got the pitchy bit, and we've got the base. We're going to need to have the base have a ton of ammunition, uh, ammunition beneath it. So in order to do that, all we really need to do is set this up with some kind of cool ammunition chain. So we'll go ahead and put this in, make sure that it's going to be pointing the right way, don't make any mistakes on that front. We're going to need another set of feeders. Technically you could do this with just one set, I wouldn't recommend it though. So we'll just put that in. Actually I think it would be better if it went up here, you'll see why in a second. It doesn't really matter where it goes, just need it. Make sure that you're pointed the correct way. And uh, then we can put in some bullets. Now when you're creating these bullets, uh, generally what I do is I just take a chain of four of them, set it up as whatever we want. We're choosing kinetic today, uh, whatever you'd like is, is fine. And then you can just uh, grab them, like so, copy them, and paste them. And that way you don't have to continually set hundreds and hundreds of these. You can just create a quick little chain like this. And then you can put in a little curvy bit. Set that curvy bit, merge it all together, and then copy the whole chain, move it over, flip it, paste it, and then you can continue that way for as long as you'd like. And then you'll have plenty of ammunition. Uh, we are going to just repeat this process for the other side, which is easier done than said. Just drag it over and flip it. Boom. Come on. And uh, what we do need to worry about is that these are not watertight. If you're putting this on a boat or something, you can't just do this because it will end up being non-watertight and you won't have the bullets in a watertight space. Maybe that's okay. It depends on what you need. But what I generally do is create a semi-watertight space, which you can do just by using these door corners and creating a quick little door. Uh, you don't have to actually close the door or create a door surface, you know, a door panel. All you have to do is have a door set up like this, and it will count that space as not sealed, but existing. And then you can just put like a pump in or something to keep the water out if you really want to. But that will work fine, and we will have that set up. You notice how this is one step higher than what we were working with? That's just because we put the pivot on top of our work surface. Not a big deal. So... The only other step we need in order to make reloading happen is we need to make it so that this will run whenever, the, whenever we have a chance to reload the gun. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect it to the connected marker. Now, whenever these are connected up, you're going to get more bullets. See that? See how they're going up? Perfect. And now if we were to, you know, come on, go back in. Move this over and fire it until we ran out. Oh, sounds like someone is backing up into my house. Notice how it's still feeding in. That's because these connectors have a really, really wide uh, reach, which is why we put them so close to the pivot. This is still counting as connected. If we were to get a little bit more excessive, there, now it doesn't count as connected anymore. But you can see how easy it is to reload this. All you have to do is bring it back into something vaguely like alignment. And we can, in fact, have that alignment be uh, indicated with some indicator lights, because it's just, it's just this, connected. 
So if we did that here and we did that here, we would have some indicator lights telling us whether we have a, uh, you know, an ammunition feed set up or not. And we could also have indicator lights telling us how many thing, how many of these contain ammo and whether we're running out and all that jazz. I've got circuitry built for all of that, but you don't need it. You've got a fully functional turret right now. This is a fully functional turret. Other things you might want, you might want to put on cameras, laser range finders. You can tweak exactly how high up this is so that, you know, it's, it's closer to the ground. Um, if you don't need that space, something like down here. And the reason you might do these sorts of things is because you, uh, you are trying to get your, your turret into the most reasonable amount of space possible. That mostly depends on how much space these guns need for the range of motion you're going to allow them to have. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and implement that. So you can use microchips for this, but a function chip usually just works fine. So what I do for these is we're taking direct input right now. One of the things you might do is you might have it so that the input switches between several different types and stuff like that. You can get very complicated with it. What we're going to do, though, is just very, very simply hook it up to one of these function chips. And that's going to let us control the maximum pitch. Uh, did I do it? No, I didn't. The maximum pitch and yaw and exactly how much of what. So this is our yaw here. So we're just going to take x times 2 for yaw, or x divided by 2 for yaw, x divided by 2 for yaw. And then for pitch, we're going to take x divided by, and yes, it's x again, even though it's technically y now. That's because x is the argument in the function block. So you know, don't get too confused about that. We're going to go ahead and say that we want this to go to a 45 degree angle upwards. What does that mean? Well, this works in something called turns. So a 1, you know, 1.000 is a single complete 360 turn. So every 90 degrees is 0.25, which means if we want to go 45 degrees, it's 0.125. That is a 45 degree angle. So that means that if we go and we press up on our, uh, on our seat like this, it's going to lock at a certain angle. And it looks like this is actually locked considerably lower than uh, 0.125. That looks like 0.06 or thereabouts. And I think that's because I forgot. I'm so used to working with uh, the other kinds of pivots. Each kind of pivot is a little bit different. These pivots don't work in turns. These pivots work in half turns for reasons that are unknown to me. It's probably just that the dev didn't think too hard about it when he was making them. So while a turn goes, you know, 1.000 is 360 degrees, these robotic pivots can only go 180 degrees. And they are not 180 degrees uh, 0 to 1. They're negative 1 to 1, so they're actually uh, more like 0.5, I believe. And this, of course, we can just take it as x straight up. Yeah, see how that stopped at 45 degrees? That's what we want. So now it's responding correctly to our motions, but we still have this negative pitch, and we haven't built this turret to handle a negative pitch. There's just no way that's ever going to work. We're bumping into the surface. So we're going to want to go ahead and just tweak that. So instead of having this as just 0.5x, we're going to go ahead and have it take it as a max of 0 and 0.5x, which means it will never go below 0, regardless of how low we try and make it go. So this is up, and this is down. Nothing, see? The only problem with this is that our seat is still registering it as down, so our seat is currently at negative 1, even though we can't go to negative 1. So when we press up, it takes a second for the seat to get above 0. Now this is something you can solve with controllers or not using sticky controls and instead using counters and stuff like that. You can polish this however you want. But this is it. This is a fully functional turret. All you have to do is add the cowling that you'd like, you know, the hull, and have some fun with it. The, this basic setup works so well. Uh, it gives you an almost unlimited amount of bullets almost all the time. It, it is very easy to aim, very robust, can be repaired easily on the fly. Uh, and I have dozens and dozens of turrets built with this same basic setup. 
Uh, here's a, an automated anti-air turret, which you can see uses the smaller guns rather than the larger guns. And this doesn't even have any controls because it's all completely chip automated. So if we were to look into it, you can see there's the ammo drums down here exactly like we had before. And once again, we've just got connectors that pipe it up in through here and out into the sides just like we did with our previous example. All of these things, oh, let, me, let me just change the color so that you can see a little bit here. Come here. So it doesn't really matter what kind of gun you use, the exact layout will, dif will differ, obviously. But the same basic idea always applies. We've got the ammunition feed into the gun, and uh, then we've got the ammunition feed from the ship into our turret. If you are going to be using autocannons, be careful about how many guns draw from a barrel, from one of these, one of these bad boys here, uh, these drums. Each of these drums is intended to feed a single gun. If you are trying to draw from one of these barrels into two guns, you're very likely to run into a shortage where one of the guns will fire and the other one won't. And you can try and get around that by using you know, splitters and, and trying to use pushers, um, feeders, these things. I haven't managed to find any decent way to do it. There is simply a limit on how fast these barrels, these drums, are allowed to feed into the guns, and that limit is pretty low. So that's how you make turrets. And if you don't want to make turrets and you just want turrets, you can go over into uh, my workshop and find dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of them. I have millions of these, and uh, they all work reasonably well. So, you know, go have fun with that. But I recommend you build your own. I do love this one, though. I like this one because it's so tiny. Yeah, I managed to fit an enormous amount of gun into a very tiny package. This is a battle cannon turret that can actually point downwards and upwards and has enough enough ammunition built into it to uh, last for quite an extended engagement. It, uh, it's tiny enough that you can probably fit it onto a helicopter. Well, have fun. This is the part of the game I like, and I hope you like it too. The art of moving things around. Uh, I should note that before this DLC came out, I was a big fan of trying to move cargo around. That's what I like to do. I like to move things around. Have fun.